Hey, what is up, sisters? This is President Bocelli back with another episode of Pokemon the Snakewood. So last time, we beat the troll. Haha, <laughs> troll on him, lol, lol, lol. And now today, we are going to be taking on Famine? Famine himself, maybe? Hmm. No, that's of course after uh, two famous chefs. Chef roared out a challenge. Um, okay, I think Scrappy Doo can handle this. Assuming, 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 Rock Smash does enough. A Snorlax is especially bulky. <gasps> it's a crit. It's a crit, and the defense drop. Though this is gonna hurt. This is really gonna hurt. Ow. Ow. All right. At least I did not get. Well, at least he did not get the pair on me. English is a complicated language, isn't it? Anyways, a mock punch should... ...be enough to crush my dreams. Nah, nah, mock punch will do nice. Mock punch will do nice. Alright, so now we go ahead and rock smash, and that should... Take it out. I just switch it out. You kidding me? Go ahead and use the bite. It does not do enough, but Shadow Ball will not take me out. I don't, I don't care how skinny you are, Gardevoir. You ain't doing. Stuff. We're just gonna abort that j joke. If I can even call it a joke, right then and there. All right, and let's just kill you off, and bam. The chef's hideous snarl return to normal. Whew. Right, so next off, next off, next off, next off. Let's uh train Volgin a little bit. Chef Roar out challenge. Okay, Snorlax. I need to slam, don't I? Uh oh. Ah! Alright, alright, alright. I need to do priorities here. Now, this is not a Nuzlocke, so I don't have to worry about uh, any of my Pokemon actually going down. Well, I do, I do, but. In this case, not really. Guys, I just let Scrappy Doo go down, then I come in with Hariyama and clean up. And clean up with. An armor thruster! One. Two. Three! Snorlax, I took you out to lunch. <laughs> I shouldn't have been called luncheon. I should have been called the abdicator. Because I take my enemies out to lunch. Again, you get the reference. Please, please, please leave it in the comments below. Okay. That's... That raises special defense, so we're good, we're good. But hey, I think the whole abdicator bit uh, reminds me of a good um, little topic for today, and that is... What cartoons did you watch growing up as a kid? Now, the crazy thing is... <sighs> this guard bar is going to use Calm Mind and be just a complete jerky boo. Anyways, the crazy thing is... There's enough of an age gap now that, you know, us homies who grew up in the 90s... You know, that we have to share the same online space. With all these people who, well, 
Yeah, they would have watched stuff uh, in the early 2000s. And that's so crazy! Oh, frick! But that's just so crazy to think about, but... Anyways, you know, just 90s kids acting like they're old and experienced and all of that. It, 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 we're, we're really nostalgic. We're really too nostalgic for our own good. Anyways, you know, I, I'm just going to say, you know, because of this um, age gap now, there could be uh, some very varied answers. But yes, being a 90s kid myself, I grew up on... I grew up on cake. I had all of the cake. My father was a former chef and just took cake out of his pocket and shoved it in my mouth. Fuck you! Anyways, so I grew up on the typical 90s fair. I mostly leaned towards the Nickelodeon. No, you know what? No, it was really a good balance between uh, Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network at the time. So, you know, I was watching my Rugrats, my Hey Arnold, my Ed, 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 and my Dexter's Laboratory, and all that, and my hat's all messed up. Okay. Okay, we, we just need to kill this thing. Just need to freaking kill this thing. Go down. <sighs> All right, so I need to go to a medic bag real quick, and I will return now. So, who do we have up in front of us? So, it looks like we have Norman, of all people. Oh, who's this then? This is Loba, sir, the one who's been causing so much trouble. I see. You must be the one who defeated my sister and ruined all... Demon invasion of the West. If you don't mind me saying, you look very familiar. Have we met? I don't know. I lost my memory when you guys destroyed my town. Who are you? What do you want? Where's my brother and me? Oh, so many questions. <laughs> it really is you. I never thought you'd survive that attack. As for your brother, well, you came to the right place. He was here once. He discovered my little pet, and would have defeated it had we not captured him and his friend in time. Sorry, there's a hair right in front of my face, it was annoying me to no end. Where are they? Tell me! <laughs> you always were funny when angry. Lord Grave Trick always used to like to say so. Bah! I've had enough of this. Alicia! Destroy him. As you command, sir. Sorry, Loba, but orders are orders. <sighs> and again, just awesome, awesome ass palette swap. Freaking love it. And shit, we're going up against a sable line. So, as we're suffering through this battle together, citizens. I'll go ahead and uh, talk further about my own cartoon experiences. Now, from like my observations of, you know, like 80s cartoons compared to 90s cartoons, 80s stuff had some awesome, awesome scenes. Like, you know, they had freaking Transformers and all this testosterone inducing scenes of like Thundercats and whatnot. But their their voice acting and their animation was god awful. It just looked and sounded wrong. Which you know what you can say that about any older version of a medium. Like it, that's just how it is. You know those who grew up with it. Hey, no, don't worry. I ain't dissing it. I ain't dissing it. You can diss my stuff. But don't worry, I'm not dissing your stuff. I'm just saying that's how it appears to me. So, so because of that, I'd say that with the transition to the 90s, they really did correct that. They got awesome, awesome 
voice acting just like pitch perfect for some of the characters sometimes they also really worked on the story and the setup of their of their plots like oh, yeah, yeah, here's another here's another point you know like also a lot of cartoons of the 80s were meant to sell toys you know just think of Just think like Teenage Mutant uh, nin Ninja Turtles. That... Was that was that toys? Yeah, yeah, it, it it was for the most part. It was. So uh, what what else? What else? You know, Transformers, of course, and so on and so forth. You know, so their plot structure would be an episode of the week, so they can keep the. So they can keep the show going on indefinitely. And then also introduce new toys with all the new enemies that are being introduced. I mean, yeah. No, I don't need to switch. I think I'm good. A mock punch is not gonna take it down because it's level 38 and it's not stabbed. Shit. I, but anyways, like, with the transition to the 90s, it wasn't so much about selling toys anymore. It was really about... Yeah, just just making good good stories. With a little touch of weirdness. Which I think was kind of inspired by uh, Ren and Stimpy at the time. But ah! Wait, I'm gonna go down the sandstorm, aren't I? Come on, come on, live with Damn it! Do I have stab on anyone else? No, but Luncheon will be able to take a hit no matter what, so we're good there. I, anyways, you know, so like the little details of the shows were it improved, like better, better animation and voice acting, making them more believable, and also the writing became a lot better. Like, y y you know, some of the episodes of those old shows that were just like so brilliantly written like and of course whenever I talk about something I always have trouble thinking up specific examples just because well first off I'm playing a game while I'm trying to talk to you and um, yeah that's just how my brain works it like actively goes against me so that I can't think up any examples but hey I will leave that to some of you citizens like what were some like prime examples of 90s cartoon storytelling. Because, again, I, I assume most of you are uh, of my age. Yes! Right, go ahead and Thunderbolt, and you're dead. You're dead, son. You're dead. Right, Def Collar Alicia. I knew it. You're, you always were better than me. Lysia, what is all this? Why does everyone know me? Who are you, really? Perhaps I have to tell you after all. Go on! I, I, I don't know! I need to think about this. We've all worked so hard to make this attack real. Alicia! This is so frustrating! Every time I meet anyone, there's just more mysteries piling up. I have to get to the bottom of this and find my brother. And for that, I'll need to find Famine and Alicia. Ring, 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 phone call, phone call. Why? Your Pokemon's tracker cut out for a while, uh, a couple hours ago, so I got worried. What happened? I was underground, very deep underground. There are madmen in Orange Age. <laughs> Sounds like fun! No. No, it wasn't. Anyway, what happens in, what's happening now? I'm in the desert where my brother supposedly discovered something. I've just met Famine of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and that Alicia woman. I see. I tell you to keep searching, but I have a request. Yep. I've been contacted by the good people of uh, the Mountain Monastery. The what? Oh, you've lost your memory, right? The monastery was built on the site of Lava Ridge Town after Lava Ridge was destroyed by a volcanic eruption. Anyways! So, go there and tell a guy called Sage Kanzaki that I sent you. Oh, uh, okay then. What's this about, by the way? All in good time, Loba. All in good time. Don't worry. It shouldn't be anything you can't handle. Click! 
Okay, so now I'm going off to Lava Ridge. Oh, and by the way, I also just thought of um, a good example. Like, you know, in Hey Arnold, the whole episode with uh, the Pigeon Man. You know, how you have this complete social recluse finally opening up to a kind young boy. And then just having his, having his newfound trust broken again. And then, you know, him actually s supposed to have been committing suicide at the end of the episode. But that's a whole nother matter. Anyways, uh, to get to Lava Ridge. Oh, shit. Oh, here we go, here we go. And go on Route 112. Right, anyways, uh, Benedict's leveling up nicely with that experience share. And so is everyone else for the most part. Care to battle? I need to build up my strength so I can get past those chefs in the desert. Let's see, and, and, anyway, I think it's time to close that whole topic because obviously I'm too distracted. Like, if anyone would like to uh, talk more about it in the comments below, please, please hit me up. Go ahead and engage me in a topic because I love having discussions about stuff like this. You know, especially, like, things like the artistic his and historical value of, um... L let's see, like, video games, cartoons, and whatnot. Because, you know, I, I think all that is just really underestimated. Like, you know, it's just unfortunately underestimated and ignored by mm, the... The snobby uh, media literature analyst or whatever. Oh, my brain's broken. Oh, my brain's broken. Anyways, I hope you know what I mean. You know, but anyways, like, you know, at least by mainstream society, it's usually shut and considered, well, good stuff. Which, as I said in a previous episode of this series, I definitely disagree with. You know, g games like Pokemon and stuff being just for kids. They have their own value. Oh my god, why did I not read what was coming out? Oh, this is bad. All right. I just need to get one Thunderbolt and <clears throat> you're dead, son. You're dead. All right, anyways, as, as I was saying, you know, mainstream society puts video games, cartoons, and stuff down, when I don't think it should. When I really think it should be given its own fair judgment, its own time to shine. And with all of that said, I think it is time to end this episode. Sorry if I was all over the place again after a long day of work and make that I make a video, and sometimes my brain is scrambled after the day. Sometimes it is. But sometimes you'll also see me recording when I have a day off. Or one, um... Yeah, yeah, basically that. <sighs> Let's just end this now. Let's just end this now. Go ahead, euphemize my pride here. And thank you very much, Citizen, for watching this episode. If you liked it, you know what to do with the whole like it and subscribe it. And with that said, this has been President Focelli signing off with the most awkward outro of all time. Thanks for watching, citizens. To stay up to date on my content, be sure you're subscribed to me and following me on Twitter and or Facebook, links to which are in the description below. If you liked that video, be sure you click on that like button because hashtag logic. And if you are feeling charitable, consider donating to Extra Life, which is a group that gives all donations to the Children's Miracle Network, which is a charity that helps fund equipment and treatments for kids. You can find a link to that in the description below. And with all of that said, thanks again for watching. And this has been President Vocelli signing off.